Hi fellow treasure hunters, this is a video explanation for the image number 3 from the book The Secret, a treasure hunt by Byron Press. We have finally found the solution for this image and uh, the solution is to be found with the verse number 2. So uh, pretty sure you will be as much convinced as I am at the end of this video that the cask is really buried where I say it is. And uh, just to warn you, I'm a French-speaking Canadian, so this explains my uh, weird accent. Okay, so now let's first take a look at the image and find the clues that tell us um, that we have to go in the city of Saint. So first of all, there's the gateway arch over the head of the statue that really looks like the gateway arch in uh, St. Louis. Uh, you will see that I also made another picture where I laid uh, the picture of the statue over the city in, of St. Louis and you will see the shape of the statue uh, looks like the, the parks that we can find in the city near the Mississippi River. Then we also have the feathers of the statue that look like the feathers of a cardinal, the bird, and the famous team, the famous baseball team, which is um, in the city of St. Louis, are the Cardinals. So this is a reference to that. And we also have the metal shafts under the arm of the statue. Uh, you can see that the statue also it has the, the shape of a plane, actually. And uh, this is a reference to the spirit of St. Louis, the famous plane with which uh, Charles Lindbergh crossed the ocean in 1927. And then uh, there is a little a little thing on his arm, on the arm of the statue, uh, that I had not found. I, I actually found all the solution for the, the cask, and this little thing was missing. But then <laughs> I saw someone on the internet uh, who said that it was a sea mine. And when I, I knew and I learned that, I searched sea mine, uh, if there was something related to the city of St. Louis, and actually there was something. There was a museum ship, the USS Inaugural. Uh, it's a, a minesweeper ship that was in the Navy uh, in the World War II. And, uh, in 1968, it was set up in ship uh, and docked in, in the city of St. Louis on the Mississippi River. Then in 1993, sadly, a flood took the ship away and uh, it landed a mile away from downtown and it's still sitting there today and people can still see it when the water is low. But that explains the sea mine on the arm of the statue and this is a big clue that we are actually in the right city to find the cask. So this is the image I made with the statue laying on top of the city of uh, St. Louis. And as you can see, um, the arch, the gateway arch, is over the head of the statue. Then his arms kind of look like the park that on each side of the gateway arch along the Mississippi River. And his body would be the perspective in front of the gateway arch the, with the parks in downtown St. Louis. So, okay, so now the place where we want to go is not uh, near the gateway arch. It's further west in the city of St. Louis. It's at a place called Forest Park. It's the biggest park in the city. And this is where we're going to find the cask. So I'm going to explain the, the verse first, but uh, really the big the big thing about all of this really is in the image, and I'm going to explain that later, but let's first start with the text. So this is Forest Park, and the place where we want to head first is named the Jewel Box. It's a greenhouse that serves as a public horticultural facility, and that was built in 1936, and this is what in the text is referred to uh, when it says at the place where jewels abound so that's where we start our quest and then the next sentence is 15 rows down to the ground so we found a couple things that could refer to uh, the sentence there is a theater very close to the jewel box so you know the rows with the seats of in the theater 
there is also another place where you can rent uh, boats very uh, close and uh, the place where people can uh, row uh, you know on the water with the boats is uh, in the direction where the cask we think is buried so this this could be 15 rows down to the ground it could be reference to that but the most interesting thing we found is that there was a floral clock that is not there anymore we, i found a newspaper article from 1984 that says time is running out for the floral clock in forest park so uh, we know that it was still there in 1982 so this is probably what it refers to so 15 rows down to the ground it could be like the roses you know of the floral clock and then it says in the middle of 21 so what i did is trace a line uh, at 9 30 you know the middle of 21 it's like 21 30 the hour and that gives me a direction so um on from end to end only three stand watch so if i trace this line up till the end of the park till i reach the end of the park i look and right on the line i have a monument with three three figures on it so that is what only three stand watch refers to and then we have um, as the sound of friends fills the afternoon hours so that is just a general sentence to uh, fit in the park it's not giving us any more clues to uh, but it's just giving us a uh, an hint that we are getting closer because there is a picnic island that is very close to the treasure ground there is the golf course and there is also a zoo uh, in the park so you know the the sound of friends fills the afternoon hours so um, this monument was built to honor the memory of uh, Friedrich Ludwig Jan um, I will come back to this monument later because it is very very important and this is where uh, everything takes sense but i'm just gonna finish the verse uh, first so the next sentence is here is a sovereign people who build palaces to shelter their heads for a night so this is a clear reference to forest park because this park was the home of a world fair in 1904 the louisiana purchase exposition and if you look at pictures of the time you will see that and it's very impressive there were literally palaces everywhere in the park um, those were temporary buildings, um, but from the look uh, of it, it was really a, an impressive sight. And uh, that sentence, you know, uh, build palaces to shelter their heads for a night, it's an exaggeration, but those were temporary buildings uh, that would last only a couple months. So this, this is a funny way to say it, but uh, it's clearly a reference to that. And a sovereign people, that's just a reference to the, the inhabitants of St. Louis. Because you know Saint Louis was a French king, Louis IX, so it's just a it's a little game play with the words, you know, to call them a sovereign people because they they, they bear the name of a French king. So that takes us to the next sentence. Gnomes admire face. Oh yeah, and first uh, I also found a, um, a postcard from the time that says a palace for kings, the sovereign people, government building. Uh, blah 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 1904 st louis so there there is actually a postcard from the world fair with the exact same words that are used in the verse you know it says a palace for kings the sovereign people so th this is kind of funny and i wonder if uh, byron press actually saw that particular uh, postcard because uh, weirdly those are the same words that we can find in the verse so that's just interesting and i put it uh, in the video to show you the next sentence is gnomes admire face delight so uh, that i have to give the credit to my girlfriend who found this one out well actually it's a theory but i really think this is the explanation for it there is a piece of art that is exposed in the museum uh, st louis museum of fine arts which is um, in forest park very close to the treasure ground and it's a chocolate gnome so it's a gnome that is uh, drowned in the melted chocolate uh, so here I put a picture for you. Um, so, you know, gnomes admire face delight. It's, uh, I think it is a reference to that. That it's kind of funny. It's a weird, uh, it's a weird little exposition. Well, I, I'm no one to judge that, but uh, it's kind of funny. And I think uh, this is what the text refers to. Okay, so now the namesakes meeting near this site. So I would just read you the definition of namesake and that will help me also because remember I'm a French speaking guy so 
and French is a homonym, a namesake. So a namesake is a person, geographic location, building or other entity that has the same name as another or that is named after another entity that first had the name. So in the city of St. Louis, the, um, the things we can call namesakes, there are uh, three that I found. There is the apotheosis of St. Louis, the um, big uh, statue in front of the St. Louis Museum of Arts. There is the old Basilica St. Louis near the Gateway Arch, and there is the, a newer basilic, uh, I think from the 1910s or uh, 20s, uh, closer to Forest Park, which is a big cathedral, but a cathedral uh, St. Louis also. So what I did is I traced lines between the two cathedrals and the apotheosis of St. Louis. And by doing so, I happened to pass very close to the treasure ground, the Ludwig Jan uh, monument, the Friedrich Lug Ludwig van monument. And uh, also what is funny is I get with the shape uh, I get from doing that, it really looks like the, the exact same shape that we have on the little clock uh, on the, uh, the image uh, from the book. So that is very interesting. And now where it, uh, and also if you look namesake St. Louis uh, on Google image, uh, images, you will see that um, this is, uh, people refer to the, um, the statue of St. Louis in front of the museum as a namesake for the city. So there are a couple of references for that. So that is a, a good clue that we are in the presence of what we are looking for. And uh, now what is very interesting and now you will understand everything is that um, the namesakes meet, meeting near this site has a double meaning. Uh, it's a pun intended and I will explain that all to you right now. So that takes us back to the Friedrich Ludwig Jan monument and um, when I was trying to solve uh, the cask I was uh, I had a good feeling this was the spot. Uh, this looked like a good spot to bury something. It's a little bit secluded, it's monumental, it's weird and uh, I was attracted to it but um, and everything was pointi pointing toward it but I really could not find a anything on the picture that related to the, the monument. I was trying to, to see it from behind or and I couldn't find it but finally it hit me. You will get it too. This is a, a little play with the word. When we say the namesakes meeting near the site uh, this is also related to this statue and uh, this guy Friedrich Ludwig Jan is considered to be the father of gymnastics nothing less than the father of gymnastics and if we take another look at our image number three from the book The Secret we see the statue with the arms extended on each side of it and it's actually doing a movement, a gymnastic movement, a very well-known gymnastic movement. It's doing the Iron Cross. The Iron Cross. If you look at it, gymnastic Iron Cross, you can search it on Google Image, you will see what it looks like. This is the exact same movement that our statue is doing. And if you uh, look at the image, uh, you will notice that uh, the... Um, the drawer was kind enough to uh, put the rings. The rings are under the arm of the statue here. I pointed uh, them on the image. And there is also this other figure on the other side of the statue, which looks like it's doing a rhythmic gymnastic movement. So those are the references to the uh, to the, the father of gymnastic from the statue. Now there is another meaning. Uh, the double meaning here is very interesting and uh, if you read about Friedrich Ludwig Jan, uh, you can search and read about him on Wikipedia, you will find very interesting things and if you search Iron Cross, not gymnastic Iron Cross, but just Iron Cross, you type that in Google Images, you get something else, you see? So you probably have already seen this symbol before. It is a former military decoration that was established in 1813 in the Kingdom of Prussia and that was later used in World War I and II in Germany. And how does that relate to Friedrich? Well, actually, 
he founded, he's considered to be the father of gymnastics, and he founded a movement named the Turnverines that was also founded the same year in 1813, as th at the time Germany was uh, ruled by Napoleon, uh, the French had invaded uh, their native land, and it was a very uh, founding moment for Germany. So, um, the idea of Friedrich, through his writings, was to create a group of people who were practicing gymnastics and through the discipline of the sport it would help to restore their moral and physical powers and prepare them for the revenge against the French. So this is very interesting and we see here the, the double meaning. So when, he's, when in the, the verse uh, it refers to the namesake's meeting there near the site you, s you saw, uh, I showed you that there was uh, there were the namesakes of the city of St. Louis, but it's it also refers to this particular statue because it has a double meaning with the drawing that we have in the image tree. There is the Iron Cross, the gymnastic movement, and we also have the Iron Cross, the military decoration. And we see that the story of Friedrich Ludwig Jan uh, starts at the, the same year that the military decoration was established. So this is very important and interesting. And also interesting is the fact that Friedrich Ludwig Jan was decorated with the Iron Cross in 1840. So we also have uh, two interesting things on the image to help us understand uh, this. There is the helmet of the the statue that looks like a Stalhelm, a German helmet from the time. And uh, we also have the logo of the Turnverines on the chest of the statue. It's uh, really similar with the four halves like this. Yeah, I put a little drawing of it. Um, I also forgot to say earlier in the video, but there is a, an armor collection that is um, displayed in the Museum of St. Louis, very close to the treasure ground. So this is maybe a reference to that also because we have the armor uh, on the image. So there are actually other clues uh, in the book The Secret that can help us to resolve the St. Louis uh, cask. Uh, other clues that are not to be found in the verse 2 or in the image tree. Uh, if you read the text that is uh, titled The Spirit of St. Louis in the book, you will find that the other is... Uh, talks about uh, Charles Lindbergh and his uh, famous plane with which he crossed the ocean. You remember I talked about it in the beginning of the video. And in this text, the other is uh, criticizing uh, the United States for having been uh, isolationist during the two world war. And the interesting thing also is that Charles Lindbergh, if you read uh, about him, you will see that he was a controversial figure because he advocated for the Isolationism of the United States and he also made uh, some um, uh, statements about uh, the Jews at the time. So this is very interesting here because we get that, that this text, the Spirit of St. Louis, is exactly like the um, statue of uh, Fr Friedrich Ludwig Jan because you know, with uh, with his story, we we see that he is also considered to be a controversial figure because he w he is at the root of the German nationalist movement, and he had good reason good reasons at the time to start his movement because Germany was uh, had been conquered by Napoleon, and he wanted he wanted to restore national uh, spirit and uh, reconquer their, their their territory, but. The, with the time, we know that nationalism in uh, Germany le led to uh, the Nazism. So this is why he's kind of a controversial figure. So we have the text, The Spirit of St. Louis, with Charles Lindbergh being a controversial figure. We have the statue of Frederick Ludwig Jan in Forest Park, considered also to be a controversial figure, both for similar reasons about the same uh, part of history. So that is very big clues that we are really solving this cask and we really are uh, close to uh, the treasure here. So it might be a bit surprising to see um, this monument to a German uh, figure in uh, Forest Park, St. Louis, but uh, 
You have to know that there was an important German uh, community in the city at the time. There were many uh, German immigrants who came to the United States in the 19th century, and they established mostly in the Midwest, and um, the city of St. Louis was a major hub uh, for them. Uh, we have the Anheuser Busch Brewery with the famous beer Budweiser that is uh, from the city of St. Louis. And uh, beer is one of the many things that the German community bring with them in the United States. The Thurnverein movement was another one. There were Thurnverein movement uh, groups in many cities of the United States and there was an important one in St. Louis. And um, they uh, wanted to honor um, the Thurn father. Uh, Lu uh, Friedrich Ludwig Jan, and that's why we find this monument. Now there is another big clue in the text, the spirit of St. Louis, a very funny clue. I uh, will read you this weird sentence that there is in the text. It's um, uh, The author says, There is no adequate English translation for the French word chauvinism, but we all know what it means, don't we? So this is interesting. I will read you the definition of chauvinism. Chauvinism is the irrational belief in the superiority or dominance of one's own group or, or people who are seen uh, as strong and virtuous while others are considered weak or unworthy. It can be described as a form of extreme patriotism and nationalism. So that you see is exactly in the same spirit of what we all just talked about. You know, we related to uh, Nazism and uh, things like that. So this is interesting, but the <laughs> very interesting thing, it's chauve, like chauvinism. Chauve in French means bald. And as you can see, the statue of Friedrich Ludwig Jan, well, the man is bald. So there is another little play with the words here. There are many little play in the words, actually, with uh, all this cask, but that is another big clue that we really have find the solution. This pretty much uh, sums it up. I really do think we have the solution here. Uh, the biggest uh, thing to understand really is the pun intended with the words Iron Cross, uh, the gymnastic movement and the military decoration. And once you read the story of Friedrich Ludwig Jan and the story of the spirit of St. Louis and you mix those stories together, well, you figure that this really is the solution to the cask and it probably is buried right in front of the monument in Forest Park, St. Louis, Missouri. So uh, we probably missed a couple little details because there is just so much things to be uh, seen in the, the, those fantastic pictures from the book The Secret. So, But uh, anyway, if you think we missed uh, uh, something that you find interesting, well, just feel free to contact us. I would be interested to know it. So thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Ah, it's a ne faribu. Sariboom, sariboom, boom. Dorime, dorime. Oh, ah, it's a.